Photographic Composition, Lecture 9, The Natural Landscape, Part 3. And we'll continue with Elliot Porter, um, again, a, a pioneering colorist um, who was had worked for several decades before color was acknowledged as a viable um, means of uh, creating fine art. Um, his images are now um, highly prized, and perhaps not as um, highly as uh, they deserve, but um, still they are much um, more widely acknowledged as being having the capacity to be great um, than they were when he was making most of them in the 40s, 50s, and, and beyond. One of his fellow photographers at um, Arizona Highways is David Munch, um, who also specialized in um, the natural landscape. And um, here you can see, because of their logo, that this was used as a um, background for the Bing um, browser. Everything gets appropriated one way or another. Um, Philip Hyde is another photographer um, who has specialized in, in color and um, in showing landscapes. Um, here, I believe this is a, a poppy field in the distance um, where the sunlight has um, is shining on a very uh, relatively um, small portion of the landscape um, and in the process has really played up the uh, color against the much darker, more muted tones of um, the area surrounding it. Robert Glenn Ketchum is a contemporary photographer also um, interested primarily in, in the natural landscape. As with most of these photographers, um, they have been extremely concerned about the um, condition of the, uh, the landscape um, and are mostly um, passionate and, and ardent um, ecologists. Um, here we see uh, particular sensitivity to um, subtle coloration um, using the darker trees in the foreground to break up um, a landscape of, of almost pastel um, colors. And here are nothing but vibrant colors. Robert Adams, who's um, probably best known for his um, images of uh, suburban sprawl and um, where uh, man has encroached on nature. Um, he's also uh, very interested in the natural environment um, and finding it wherever he can, where it hasn't been um, trampled to death one way or another. Um, he did this series, I believe in the 80s, um, of trees at night. They're very subtle. They're um, not easy to see, but um, they're, I think, absolutely be uh, beautiful. They're gorgeous. This is more the kind of image that um, I think most of us associate with Adams, Robert Adams as opposed to Ansel, where um, freeways and, and um, other man-made uh, objects in the landscape are, are threatening um, the landscape. And even Friedlander um, has turned his eye towards um, the landscape. Um, this is from a series on um, parks designed by um, Olmsted in the 19th century and um, was commissioned um, by, I believe, a Canadian group um, to document them uh, by several photographers. And, and this is one of the ones that uh, Friedlander um, came up with. But uh, Friedlander has also spent a fair amount of time in the desert, um, and of course he can't shut off his sense of humor. More of the natural landscape by Friedlander. 
And although this isn't a shadow, it is reminiscent of, of a, a lot of Friedlander's self-portraits. And because he spent so much time traveling in um, either a, a, a van or a minivan, um, he incorporates the uh, telltale signs of his environment in the foreground, um, even when he's photographing in the uh, natural world. Michael Kenna is a British photographer who lives in San Francisco and um, who has extensively photographed um, in the natural landscape, but also in um, places such as Versailles and um, other urban, suburban places, and has a very distinct style. Very interested in, in depth and um, receding um, uh, landscapes where you have dark elements in the foreground that become lighter and lighter, very much like the images that we saw by Carlton Watkins and um, Edward Mybridge. Um, but in the case of Kenna, he's a contemporary photographer, so these are not caused by the same um, conditions. This is uh, mist and haze and fog. And in the case of uh, something like this, it's about the water. Um, this is actually of the ocean, um, but a time-lapse photography uh, photograph um, where the motion of the uh, waves has blurred to the point of um, appearing to be um, clouds or, or mist. Much more like this. Richard Miserach would become um, well known later on as a color photographer, but he began um, by creating um, these nocturnal images from the desert, which he would then tone and um, lit at least in part by um, artificial means, in, in this case, a camera mounted flash. And same here. But this is more um, what I think people now know Miserac for. Very subtle tones, um, also subtle composition. There's not necessarily a lot going on here, and yet this is a really loaded image, I think. The same location under different lighting. Sebastian Salgado. Um, has been exploring the um, the outer reaches of um, the world. Um, he spent time in, in um, Antarctica and um, specifically looking at uh, um, the <clears throat> excuse me land masses, but also um, icebergs and ice flows, um, and also the animals um, that live in these areas. <clears throat> I was mentioning earlier that these photog photographers are, are particularly concerned about the environment. Um, Camille Seaman has um, dedicated herself to um, uh, letting people know about what's happening um, with, uh, specifically with the uh, polar caps and um, the fact that they're shrinking. Um, and these icebergs are getting smaller and smaller. Um, the glaciers are, are disappearing. And yet they make uh, for um, beautiful subject matter in the right hands. The colors here are astonishing. <clears throat> 